Hi, I'm Megan Stromberg with Broadcast APA and Planning Magazine. I'm here today with Steve Preston. He is a member of the LA Host Committee for the National Planning Conference, which will be in LA in 2012. Hi, thanks Hi. for joining us. It's my pleasure. Tell us a little bit about what you do in your day job. Well, my current job is as city manager of the city of San Gabriel. It's a community of about 41,000 people, nine miles outside of downtown Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. But most of my career was spent in urban and regional planning in a number of Southern California cities and a little bit of time in private consulting as well. And you mentioned to me a little earlier that you're the one committee member who served on the committee last time we were in LA, which was in, was it 1986? 26 years ago, I served on the Public Relations Committee. Uh -huh. I think I'm the only survivor to be back for the second round in Los Angeles, but it's good to have APA in LA. So what will we see, what will we see that's different in LA? It's a remarkably changed city in 26 years. For example, in 1986, there was virtually no rapid transit other than buses in Los Angeles. But today there's a host of transit options, including the Blue Line, the Gold Line, the Subway, mm -hmm. uh, Metro Rail, Light Rail from the suburbs. So Los Angeles is finally beginning to have an integrated transportation network that it never had before. And that's going to make it a much more interesting place to visit. And as, as people have told me, people from, people from LA have told me, LA is the kind of place that reinvents itself every few years. So. Almost everything will be new, it sounds like, when we get there. Well, you might think so, but actually one of those things in Los Angeles that's great is that the community is also beginning to appreciate its cultural heritage. Mm -hmm. And so just as today at the awards program, the city of Los Angeles was honored for its uh, citywide historic preservation mm -hmm. survey, you're going to get to see a little bit of the history of Los Angeles, too, which really distinguishes it from other cities in the United States. And part of what distinguishes it is that its historic sector is much younger than in some of the older northeastern and midwestern cities, and yet you're still recognizing the cultural importance of these places, even though some of them are only 40 or 50 years old. Well, it's certainly true that the fabric of Los Angeles mm -hmm. is relatively newer, mm -hmm. but actually the community's roots go back as far as the American Revolution. Los Angeles was settled in 1781, so it's actually a fairly old place, okay. and the oldest settlements in the basin are actually older than that. Mm. So there's a tremendous history to be explored, but that's also uh, a common myth that mm. we hope to disprove when people come to Los Angeles. They'll find there's a lot more there than meets the eye. And tell us a little bit about what's going on in your community. Will we? Will there be any? Do you know if there'll be any mobile workshops? We don't know yet town, whether or? whether our area will have a particular mobile workshop, but we will be one of a uh, number of communities. Mm -hmm. Uh, which will be the focus of a book which is being produced in conjunction with APA staff for the conference. It's being edited by David Sloan from the University of Southern California mm -hmm. and it's going to describe the history and development of planning in the Los Angeles region oh, wow. in all its many variations. And so the unique contribution that communities like San Gabriel mm -hmm. will offer to that text is that we're going to have a chapter or an essay in the book which talks about the growth of Asian and Pacific Islander communities in the San Gabriel Valley of Los Angeles County. Because the development of that large community, for example, San Gabriel is about 65% API today, mm. has changed everything about the way the city grows and develops. And mm. it's that sort of unique combination of diverse cultures that makes Los Angeles a really fascinating place. Uh, another another planner from LA that I was talking to mentioned that very same point that LA is very much still an immigrant community in some older cities and some East Coast cities uh, we think of Ellis Island and sort of that romanticized version of immigration vision excuse me of immigra immigration but in your neck of the woods you're still very much dealing with um, some of those issues and how does planning respond to working with different cultures? Well, it's a, a combination of factors or a combination of issues that planners have to engage on. First of all is understanding cultural differences unique mm -hmm. to the communities they serve. And in many of these communities, you're actually seeing a new generation of political leadership emerge, mm -hmm. which is different perhaps from the way it's happened in other parts of the country. But you'll get to see how planning has had to evolve to serve the needs of those communities. Uh, a recent issue in our own community was the issue of maternity tourism in which people were coming to Southern California 
in order to give birth to babies, and those babies would then have citizenship, which puts suburban communities in the middle of the ongoing national debate mm -hmm. over issues of demographics, how our population has changed, and what's an appropriate policy hmm. for receiving new immigrants from other countries. That's just one of the interesting sort of facets of working in communities mm -hmm. that are as diverse and as internationally based as you mm -hmm. find in Southern California. I think something, I've heard that something like 40% of the incoming cargo that gets dispersed across the country mm -hmm. comes through the Southern California ports. Mm -hmm. So that means that the whole part of the West Coast around Los Angeles is really at the epicenter of cultural change because of those trade relationships. Mm -hmm. Well, and in, in the increase in globalization certainly is seen on the ground uh, in Long Beach in LA. Um, how will changes to, I know that the Panama Canal is expanding and there's some talk that that might move freight um, through, through that direction. What do you think about that? What would that do for the West Coast? Well, for example, port? one of the changes in Los Angeles that's happened since 1986 is the construction of the Alameda Corridor. It is a high-speed freight movement system mm -hmm. to get containerized cargo from the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach mm -hmm. to downtown Los Angeles where rail lines then disperse all of that freight across the nation. Mm -hmm. 26 years ago that system didn't exist. Today it helps move product across the country mm -hmm. at a much faster rate than other, ever before. And that means both economic benefits to the cities that are there but also potential consequences. Mm -hmm then once that freight arrives at downtown and heads out across the country, there are now lines being built uh, to facilitate that rail cargo mm -hmm. as it moves out across Los Angeles County and out into other regions and states. So there's a real fascinating ongoing discussion of how you upgrade rail infrastructure mm -hmm. for goods movement and then what other changes you need to make to land use and transportation systems mm -hmm. to adapt to those changes for goods movement. Finally, tell me a little bit about um, what some of the benefits are to for planners from different areas of the country in coming to the conference in LA. There is nothing like Los Angeles because it's really like a hundred cities in one. There are many cities that are beautiful or unique because of their unitary design and culture, but Los Angeles is a place where every neighborhood Every city mm -hmm. represents a new twist on how life is lived in Southern California. In Los Angeles County alone, there are, I believe, 88 incorporated cities. And they represent everything from old growth first ring mm -hmm. suburbs to new suburban new town models mm -hmm. that are, are as different as you can possibly imagine, but each of those communities has had to find its own way to plan for its future. And we hope to show you some of that unique diversity to, for everybody that comes to Los Angeles. It's going to be a great conference. Great. You have the whole spectrum all in one place. We do indeed. Terrific. And we've already talked about some of the terrific topics that will um, be discussed both in the hallways and in the session rooms and mobile workshops. And we're really looking forward to seeing you in L.A. and uh, At L.A. Live at the JW Live. Marriott and the new convention center and all of the great, the great stuff that's happening in downtown Los Angeles. It's going to be a radically transformed town from the one you saw 26 years ago. And we hope everybody comes out and enjoys the conference in L.A. Great. Well, thank you very much, Steve. It's a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you, Megan.